Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana. I'm Reverend Larry Marie Heil, and I'm the spiritual director here. And at our center, we're a group of radically inclusive spiritual renegades, healing hearts and creating community. And we embrace conscious spiritual living and encourage everyone to live in enthusiastic expectancy of their abundance and their good. We're beginning our November series today, A Grateful Heart. And our message is of the same title, A Grateful Heart. We're learning to be grateful no matter what life might be looking like for us in this moment in time. So stay with us as we talk about how we can do just that. Let's begin with prayer. We move into our hearts. We settle into that place where we know the divine, where we know that spirit of God that lives in each of us. Hmm. And we connect with that one life that's God's life and that's our life right here and right now with all of the joy and the peace and the ease and the comfort and the grace and the freedom. Hmm. And what I know is that we are each here by divine appointment to hear something today, to expand our spiritual territory. It might be part of the message, part of the reading. It could be a song, a quote, any of the above, all of the above. Whatever it is, I know that we have been drawn here to be part of this community today and to strengthen our faith. Hmm. So I am grateful. I'm so grateful you decided to join us. I'm grateful we have this opportunity to be in community together. And I'm grateful to remember that wherever I am, wherever you are, God is. So from that gratitude, I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth that the divine has already said yes, so I can say amen, and we can affirm it together. And so it is. It's easy to be grateful when we remember that each new day is a blessing. Sing along with our music team as they sing, This is the day the Lord has made.
This is our time for celebration and healing. Our time in our service where we celebrate life and we pray for people who desire prayer. We begin with celebration, so I invite you to say aloud so that the whole universe can hear it, any event in your life for which you're grateful and joyful this week. And now we turn to the healing portion of our service. We're a community steeped in healing. So we pause now to pray for anyone who's not feeling the joy of life that we perhaps were just feeling. They're not feeling maybe that they have things to celebrate. And I truly love this part of our service because it's so in alignment with who we are. So let's pray. God is all there is. God is that love and that peace and ease and grace and freedom and so much more. And as an individual expression of the divine, each of us have within us all of these qualities of spirit. They're available to us right here and right now. And what I know to be the truth is that there are people on this planet right now that aren't embracing those qualities. So we stop for a moment and we create a circle of love. And in this community, we place in that circle of love anyone that we recognize within ourselves or for someone else that might need prayer. So I'm gonna pause and I just invite you to say aloud the names of all of those people that you wanna include in our circle of love. I know that God is right where each of us happens to be, right here and right now, moving in through and as each of us. And I know that the divine has heard every name that we spoke, either in our hearts or aloud. And what I'd like you to do now is pause again, and from your heart to all of theirs, just send out love, knowing that the divine knows exactly how to distribute it. And what I know to be the truth is that anything that needs to be released within each of these people is being released now, be it disease of the mind, of the body, of the soul. I know that anything that's seeking to come forth and be lifted up can be lifted up. And that this release and this lifting up is healing whatever's called to be healed. I know that each of these people is feeling more deeply their connection with the divine right now. I have evidence of that, and I know it to be the truth for everyone that we place in our circle. So I'm so grateful to know that the God without is the God within me. The God without is the God within every person in our circle, every person in this community, and every person on this planet. And I'm grateful for that power of community prayer and what it means to the uplifting of the people on this planet. So it's from all that gratitude that I release this prayer into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Because I know that the divine, in all of its wisdom, has already called all of this good. Any heavy lifting that needs to be done to heal whatever needs to be healed, the divine is already taken care of. So I can just know it's already done, say amen, and together we can affirm it. And so it is. I invite you to join me for our community affirmation. My life's purpose is already within me and I am committed to its unfoldment. I am here by divine appointment to join in a community that cares for one another, to be in a place that transforms people's lives, to remember the highest truth about myself to learn spiritual tools for personal transformation, and thus to make the world a more joyful place. Hi, this is our time for meditation. And I invite you just to release the past, forget about the future for the next few minutes, and just move into this moment right here, right now. 
so that you can truly listen with your heart and notice that real you within you, all of who you are, all of your life for which you can express gratitude. So during this meditation, just empty yourself and be open to saying yes to whatever it is that the divine is asking of you. As you listen to our fabulous CSL music team, sing the beautiful song by Melissa Felipe called Tender Yes. <laughs> in the arms of the divine. So I say that tender yes to everything, everything that shows up in my life and know when I surrender to it, I feel peace. So I invite you in the time when Bill is playing his music to say that tender yes to open your heart allow yourself to be free free to hear whatever it is the divine wants you to hear free to feel all of the divinity that you are Feel to know that when you accept that divine within you, it can bring you to your knees. So say the tender yes and find peace.
So as we return back to this time and space, just notice what it was that the divine was asking you to say yes to. What was it that it was time to say yes, to open your heart, to notice what it is that you can surrender to and find that essence of peace that lives right within you. Say the tender yes. Open your heart and be free. My name is Nancy Wirtz, and our reading today is a poem by Melody Beatty called Gratitude. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home and a stranger into a friend. It turns problems into gifts, failures into successes, the unexpected into perfect timing and mistakes into important events. It can turn an existence into a real life and disconnected situations into important and beneficial lessons. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates vision for tomorrow. And so it is. I'm so grateful for this song of Karen Drucker's that Gary Lynn Floyd is singing for us because it's a way to remember gratitude in all aspects of who we are. It's called, I'm So Grateful. Let it become an earworm this week. Sing along. A song by my friend Karen Drucker. Gratitude before me. Gratitude behind me. Gratitude to the left of me. Gratitude to the right of me. Gratitude above me. Gratitude below me. Gratitude within me. Gratitude all around me I'm so grateful I'm so grateful I'm so grateful I'm so grateful Sing it with me Gratitude before me Gratitude behind me Gratitude to the left of me 
Gratitude to the right of me the Gratitude above me Gratitude below me Gratitude within me Gratitude all around me We're so, we're so grateful 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 I'm so I'm so grateful I'm so grateful I'm so grateful I'm so grateful I'd like to thank our reader, Nancy Wirtz, for the wonderful reading that she always does. And of course, our CSL music team and Gary Lynn Floyd for the music today. We're beginning our new November series called A Grateful Heart, learning how to truly live from a place of gratitude. And our topic today is of that same name, A Grateful Heart. No matter what your life might look like in this moment in time, I suspect that we've all experienced gratitude at some point in our lives. Whether it be for a fabulous meal, for that bicycle we got at Christmas when we were young, or perhaps for a good friend who just happened to show up at the perfect time to help you celebrate something, or perhaps to pull you out of the dungeons of your mind during some challenge that you were encountering. Today is all about living each day with a grateful heart. And here's your question for the week. What is that one choice that you can make today to adjust your perspective to gratitude, to take action and refuse to quit around your challenges, and to develop habits which increase gratitude. One more time. What is that one choice that you can make today to adjust your perspective to gratitude, to take action and refuse to quit around challenges, and to develop habits which increase gratitude? I love that phrase, what we appreciate, appreciates. If each of us truly embraced that statement, we would all be living from gratitude in every moment of every day and seeing our good everywhere. I admit that sometimes my appreciating something, like the driver that just cut me off in traffic or almost caused a wreck, takes an adjustment of my perspective. Imagine what might happen the next time a driver cuts you off if you bless that driver on their way. Truthfully, they could be rushing to an emergency. We have no way of knowing. And in giving them the benefit of the doubt, what we do is see their behavior as necessary in their world and bless them to have a safe journey. Eric Butterworth in Spiritual Economics wrote this. You do not need something to be grateful for. You need only the desire to feel grateful. Can we not have a desire to feel grateful? And yes, that does mean that we have to remember to adjust our perspective at times. One perspective adjustment is to prioritize those things in our life that feel like adversities. Have you ever noticed that when you're experiencing adversity that you can easily become distracted with minor setbacks, disappointments, and they quickly seem to add up and become what I call whelming? So what can we do? we can remember to differentiate between the minor inconveniences and the real obstacles that are major. 
For example, having a car problem and it maybe having to take the bus to work is a minor inconvenience. On the other hand, Losing your job and not having the money to pay your car note is a major inconvenience and a major obstacle in life. And when we can prioritize these adversities, we can determine what is most pressing and develop an effective plan of attack. In this thing called you, Ernest Holmes wrote this. When a problem confronts you, Take it into the silence of your consciousness. Instead of thinking of the problem, think of the answer. God does not have problems. Therefore, the divine mind is the answer to every human problem. Let me repeat that. The divine mind is the answer to every human problem. Principles never have problems. Problems are solved by bringing them under the control of principles. The problem is dissolved as the principle flows through it to the correct answer. So allow your adversities to be dissolved by giving it over to the divine mind where the answer exists to every human problem. Another perspective adjustment is to accept that setbacks and periods of adversity happen to everybody. Challenges are just a normal part of this life when we're in these rental bodies and staying in the doldrums over them keeps you stuck and in victimhood or in negative thinking. Ernest Holmes wrote this, drop all negative thoughts from the mind. Do not dwell on adversity, but think plenty into everything. For there is a power in the word. Meditate on the things you are doing as being already done, complete and perfect. And just to clarify, accepting adversity and not dwelling on it does not mean that you won't feel sad or frustrated at times. And I actually recommend giving yourself permission to feel those negative emotions fully. Yet, try setting a time limit on how long you're gonna dwell on those adversities. For example, schedule 30 minutes to cry about it and feel your pain. And when the time is up, divert your attention to doing something positive, perhaps volunteering somewhere or noticing all that you do have for which to be grateful. Then do as Holmes suggests, meditate on the diversity dissipating and the power you have to overcome it. And if you're one of those people who when you experience setbacks, you dwell on what you did that might've caused it, here's another perspective adjustment. Notice how capable and resilient you are. Now, no back talk here. You are capable and resilient. How do I know? We've all survived hardships at some point in our life. One way or another, we found the strength to overcome whatever that hardship happened to be in the past. So believe in yourself and know you're capable of overcoming whatever life setbacks might be happening at this moment. In a Holmes Reader on meaning, Holmes wrote this. Here we may meet difficulties, uncertainties, and doubts, barriers walling our passage, but we must not be discouraged when so confronted. We must climb over the rocks of unbelief pass around the barriers of doubt, and plunge into the stream with faith. The stream will ever widen. The barriers will gradually disappear. Though we walk through the plains and valleys of indecision and doubt, the stream will still carry us back to the ocean of our being. We're each capable of climbing over those rocks and plunging into the stream with faith. 
Faith that knows we are resilient enough to overcome whatever setbacks we're encountering. We just need to take that plunge and have faith in the abundance of the universe. Stop the doubt and fear and absolutely stop retelling your story of your adversity. Quit repeating it. We must cling determinately to our spiritual truth that the universe is for us. It's abundant and we deserve that abundance in every aspect of our life. So no matter how long it takes, walk and live and speak in faith that which is true. Amazingly, in taking the plunge, we invite the good of the universe to begin to reemerge in our lives in whole new ways. Paul Zader wrote this, there is a natural law of abundance which pervades the entire universe, but it will not flow through a doorway of belief in lack and limitation. So make sure your doorway is filled with faith and belief in your good showing up for you and that you are not retelling any stories of adversity, lack, or limitation. Another great perspective adjustment is to always look for the positive. I can just hear you say, you have to be kidding. I'm not kidding. Pollyanna is a great life attitude. Winston Churchill reminded us, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. So if you want to overcome adversity, you have to focus on the positive, whether it means the positive aspects of your situation or the positive results you'll feel when you get past the situation or when you achieve what you want in the future. Try asking yourself where the opportunity exists in this difficulty. And if you're having trouble focusing on the positive, Sit and make a list of all the good things in your life, of all the good things you may have to look forward to, and what I bet is you'll soon feel happier. And you might think more positively. I know at the top of the list are my children and grandchildren. What might be on your list? I think one of my biggest perspective adjustments was learning to reframe my mistakes as learning opportunities. I know in school, I never missed the same question twice. When I saw that red ink around an answer, I knew that I would remember the correct answer forever. Did you ever have a similar experience? If so, perhaps it's time we no longer look at mistakes as failures. Instead, we understand and acknowledge that something went wrong. We identify what we learned from the situation and what we might do differently the next time around. And by the way, if you're struggling to find the learning opportunity in some situation, tell the story to a friend as though it was something that happened to somebody that you know, and then ask them, what lesson do you think they were learning? It's amazing what we can learn from those objective friends of ours. We know that not every moment of every day is going to be a miracle one. Although I have to admit, when I think about the fact of how many breaths I take every day without even thinking about it, I do have to kind of think that every moment is a miracle. And because we live in these rent bodies, we have to be realistic about our lives. One way is to set realistic goals, breaking them into smaller goals that can be achieved in successful small steps. And that helps us remain motivated and it decreases our frustrations. Your confidence gets a boost every time you achieve a small step and you have something for which to be grateful. You're one step closer to your goal. 
So for example, suppose you're trying to lose 30 pounds. Set a goal to lose one pound a week. It often takes a long time to lose 30 pounds, so focusing on smaller weekly goals provides opportunities for us to regularly boost our confidence. Hey, we did it. Focusing on the smaller goals makes those setbacks seem less significant. And let's face it, failing to lose one pound sounds a lot less than I didn't lose the 30 pounds I was trying to lose. So how does this relate to living with a grateful heart? What might be realistic about your goals to live with a grateful heart? One thing might be to use affirmations to remind you to live with a grateful heart and create visual reminders. Having visual reminders about living with a grateful heart in various locations helps me to motivate myself as well as focuses my energy. I use the back of my cabinets, my bathroom mirror, my wallet, put stickers on credit cards that I might use pretty frequently. Make your reminders either very basic or extremely elaborate depending upon your preferences. The key issue is to remind yourself regularly to live with a grateful heart so you can experience loving your life more. And if the affirmations don't seem to be working, have a plan B. Look for other solutions that might eliminate the problems in your life which keep you from having a grateful heart. Michael Jordan said this, obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it, or work around it. We've already discussed a lot of ways to address setbacks, and perhaps you might create a contingency plan, a way to climb it, go through it, or work around it. Often, just having options helps us remain hopeful and keep that positive attitude. Just in case we hit a detour along the way of our problem solving, it never hurts to have alternate routes to success. There's an old Dutch proverb that says, the gym cannot be polished without friction, nor man perfect it without trials. To me, that proverb is an invitation to remember that our diversities polish us. They make us better. So we should refuse to quit. Giving up never solved any problem. Most circumstances eventually change. Everyone who wishes to change or improve their circumstances typically has to go through some kind of personal struggle. And most people who have overcome adversity have stories of their difficulties and how they actually benefited from those difficulties. Try to realize the benefits of moving forward, such as gaining resolve, personal strength, thicker skin, despite the fact that it may be unpleasant at the moment. Remember, you are a gem in the process of being polished and perfected. So stay on task. If you need a break from the frustration, take one and then commit to returning to it as soon as you are in a less agitated state. As Ralph Waldo Emerson told us, when it's dark enough, you can see the stars. There are some habits that help us to increase having a grateful heart. I'm gonna share some of the ones that are most important to me. First one, and the top most on my list, is I have a philosophy that keeping a gratitude journal and regularly acknowledging those things in our life for which we're grateful actually helps my positive perspective of life. And positive attitude help me to tackle things that appear to be adversities. On those not so wonderful days, 
I can pick up my gratitude journal and read all of those things that are so great about my life. And by the way, to help you start one, you can download a 30-day journal from our website at cslsoutheastla.org. A second useful habit is to create and nourish a support system. I talk a lot about traveling this road on earth in community. And to live with a grateful heart, it helps to have a mentor or a prayer partner or a friend, someone who helps to provide guidance and support and keeps us focused on the truth that everything is always in divine order, which sometimes we tend to forget. Having people to turn to in times of adversity helps provide comfort and support. So develop a support system before you need one so you can engage those resources when the time comes. Pay frequent attention to friends and family, be it your birth family or a chosen family, and keep those relationships healthy. Mentors and prayer partners and friends can be a positive source of escape from adverse situations. And sometimes we just want somebody to listen to us. So if you don't already have a support system, you probably know several people who would be great for you in your support system. Ask the divine to guide you to the perfect people. I personally have a support system made up of people all over the United States, multiple mentors and prayer partners, and they provide me various points of view and guide me in my varied aspects of my life. And I make sure that there are regular texts and phone calls so that I can maintain and strengthen those connections. I feel like when I ask for support and when I need prayers around something, I always get them very rapidly and I can feel grateful for life events. And a third tip, which is also very important, is take care of your physical health. I don't know about you, but I know when I'm not feeling very healthy, it's hard for me to have a grateful heart. Studies show that regular exercise, healthy diet, and quality sleep contribute to a greater sense of overall well-being and to increase resilience. And by the way, higher self-esteem. So for myself, when I adopt a healthy lifestyle, I find it much easier to cope with anything that comes up for me and to inoculate myself against future adversities. I just seem to see life through brighter sunglasses. Jean Houston wrote, we all have the extraordinary coded within us waiting to be released. Isn't it about time that we release that extraordinary that's coded within us and learn to live a life in which a grateful heart is always the norm? I think it is. So in addition to the lovely poem that Melody Beatty wrote that was our reading today, I want to end with some more words of hers about gratitude. Gratitude makes things right. Gratitude turns negative energy into positive energy. There is no situation or circumstance so small or large that it is not susceptible to gratitude's power. We can start with who we are and what we have today. Apply gratitude, then let it work its magic. Say thank you until you mean it. If you say it long enough, you will believe it. So let's let gratitude work its magic this week in our lives and in the lives of the many people that we touch with our positive energy.
And so in summary, how might you learn to have a grateful heart all the time? Adjust your perspective to gratitude. What we appreciate, appreciates. And notice how resilient and capable you are. Refuse to quit around any challenge that comes into your life and know that you and the divine together can overcome any obstacle. Remember, a gem cannot be polished without friction. And develop habits which increase your gratitude. Keep a gratitude journal, that's one of my favorites. Create and nourish a support system and live a healthy lifestyle. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it I so easily and willingly make the choice today to adjust my perspective to gratitude, to take action and refuse to quit around challenges and to develop habits which increase gratitude? And your challenge for the week is to live with a grateful heart. Observe yourself this week and notice when you might be discouraged or feeling defeated. And remember how capable and resilient you are. And if you need to, use your support system or nurture it for future use. I also invite you to check in a couple times a day just to see how you're doing and do that gently. So let's pray. Mm, just taking a deep nourishing breath, settling into the gratitude that we have for living a life in which we know that all is good, all is God. That we are these individual expressions with the extraordinary coded right within us, just waiting for us to release it. So what I know to be the truth is that each of us this week is releasing that extraordinary, that we're allowing ourselves to be polished so that we can be those gems that we've come here to be, bright and shining, shining our light and creating a positive atmosphere on this planet. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful to know that the God without is the God within each of us, moving in through and as us. I am so grateful. And it's from that gratitude that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth that wherever we are, God is, and that God has already said yes to our request. So I can just say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And again, I wanna thank everyone that contributes to our community in whatever way you contribute, it's all very important. Whether it be financial support or support of another nature, I am grateful. And I hope you enjoy our offertory song. From the love of your spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to you, bless and prosper. It does good work in the world and returns to me, multiplied abundantly. From the love of your spirit within me, I bless this Send it forth to heal, bless, and prosper. It does a work in the world and returns to me, multiplied abundantly. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. You can find all of the information for donating at our website at CSL 
southeastla.org. You can use the donate button there, or you can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 1-225-320-5100, or you can mail your donation to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Reverend Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations, and we appreciate the fact that you are giving gifts that are flowing out to everyone we touch. I want to tell you a little bit about our Harvest Dinner, which is going to be on November 18th. It's a Friday evening at 530 and we're going to be gathering to break bread together over at the Kenilworth Breck Park Center. It's a big room and we'll have plenty of space. And it's always a great time. We come together to have a Thanksgiving meal, to bid on some auction items, silent auction, regular auction, raffles. It's just always a lot of fun. So I hope you'll set aside that date. Let us know you're coming so we can plan to have enough food. We provide the turkeys and ham and you just bring a casserole or something to share. We hope that you'll join us and have a great time with us. See you then. This song that our wonderful music team is singing sums up how I feel when I truly live with a grateful heart. And I dare to face any adversity knowing that God has the answer. It's called Joy and Peace in My Heart. Sing along. Joy and peace in my heart, always I feel. Joy and peace in my mind, God will then reveal. Joy and peace in my life. continue our November series of A Grateful Heart, and the message is Secrets of Abundant Living. I hope you'll decide to join us as I share a few of my secrets about how to live abundantly, and thus always have a grateful heart. Thank you for joining us today. I invite you to like us on Facebook at Center for Spiritual Living, Southeast Louisiana. And please follow us on our YouTube channel at C-S-L-S-E-L-A. And it's just about time to join in our community time, which is a live discussion that follows the service every Sunday at 1145 a.m. You have a little bit of time to go get a cup of coffee or some tea and then dial into our conference line. The number is 540 792 0192. And the participation code is 475-220. We hope you'll join us. And so in closing, remember, Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth, but we at the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana know that we are absolutely the most joyful. So until we meet again, may you be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness 
And may you remember to adjust your perspective to live with a grateful heart, remembering how resilient and capable you are and refusing to allow challenges to lessen your life in any way. Know that God is bigger than any problem. And when we know that, we learn to live in joy and peace. And when we're living in joy and peace, what I know is we feel very much alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My spirit is alive.